Zond. Yes? Hold this. No! Ah! A plastic snake! These things are terrifying. Yes, but what if the snake was real? This is a case for investigation. Ouch. As a doctor specialising in tropical medicine, I'm used to working in some exotic locations with dangerous creatures. But today, I'm on the top floor of the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. And in fact, this is one of the most dangerous locations I've ever been in, because on this floor are 180 of the world's deadliest snakes. Meet Dr. Robert Harrison. Why are you keeping 180 venomous snakes in this room? We take venom from these snakes, and that venom is used to make medicines to treat people who would otherwise die from snake bite. That life-saving medicine is known as anti-venom, and it's actually made using the snake venom itself. The anti-venom medicine Dr. Robert and his team are helping to make in Liverpool is used to treat people 4,000 miles away in West Africa, where there are 36,000 deaths every year from snake venom. Meet Paul Rowley, an expert snake handler who's brought some snakes out of their habitat for us to see in action. Well, this is the Nigerian sawscale viper, and it's the, um, amongst the most dangerous snakes in the world to man. Even though they are small, they are an extremely dangerous snake. They do kill a lot of people. For such a little snake, it can cause a lot of harm. And this small drop of venom that we've just collected is more than enough to kill a human being. But it's also enough to make the anti-venom that will save people's lives. If you're squeamish, look away now. This is a 12-year-old boy who was bitten on the foot by a Nigerian saw-scaled viper. He lost his big toe, but the anti-venom saved his life. Each snake has a different type of venom and needs its own anti-venom to be made. So, ready for another? This one is seriously fantastic. This is a Nigerian puff adder. The snake has just bitten the mat, and that's just one of the problems of, of doing this, is this is a very, very tricky thing to do. This adder's venom has a different effect on the human body to the previous snake. Terrific destruction of the tissues around the bite. It just destroys the, the muscle and the skin. So this venom actually dissolves flesh Absolutely. and then it spreads around the body and, and then it spreads around the body. Yeah. This is a seven year old boy who was bitten on the hand by a Nigerian puff adder while he was cutting grass. The venom caused blood filled blisters to erupt, but he made a full recovery thanks to the anti venom. But not all snakes release their venom by biting. This snake is extremely quick and it can spit its venom. And that's why it's called the spitting cobra. In fact, it can spit as far as two metres, and if it was to get in your eyes, it could blind you. So Dr Robert's got his face guard on, and I'm staying well away to let the experts collect the venom. Ooh. You're just milking the venom glands there. Just massaging the venom glands. Now, don't worry. It's highly unlikely you'll ever need the anti-venom being made here. We don't have any snakes like that in England, do we? We don't. We're really lucky we don't have anything like the, the cobras or the, or the puff adders and things like that. But we do have the British adder. And it it's, is actually a really quite important snake. There was a, a near-death case two years ago. So I... when you're going out, just stay clear of these snakes. Don't handle them, don't touch them, leave them alone. Rob, I think after today, that advice is extremely obvious. I'm going to stay well back. <laughs> <laughs> that was spectacular. And remember, the venom that Rob and Paul risked their lives to collect today in Liverpool will be used to make anti-venom, and that will be used to save people who've been bitten by snakes in Africa. Time to go to the emergency department. Let's go! To see our next patient, and it's this way, Zand. Sorry. In the emergency department, 11-year-old Tadenda is waiting with his mum. What are you here, fella? I woke up yesterday morning and my wrist was really hurting. Sportsman Tatenda thinks he hurt his wrist while perfecting his football moves in the back garden. When he slipped, fell backwards and landed right on it. Ouch! A stop right there, Chris, and rewind! Because Tatenda's mum says it wasn't his fancy footwork, but his fast finger action which caused the injury. Impressive skills! Mum says the tender sometimes spends a whopping four hours a day gaming, and she thinks that's how he strained the muscles in his arm. Ooh, that's not great. Ouch! Let's 
see if Dr Rachel Evans can sort this argument out. When I'm pushing there, where does it hurt? Around here. Oh, pop it. Should we take a picture of your hand? Good idea, Doc. So it's over to X-Ray. What's the result? Do you know what this is? It's my wrist. It's your wrist. And if you can see, all around the bone is really nice and smooth, so there's no breaks. I think this is spending a bit of time on this tablet. It appears to be an injury. <laughs> Mum thinks the hours Tatenda spends tapping away on his tablet have caused a repetitive strain injury. This means that inside Tatenda's hand, the muscles, nerves, and tendons have got really sore from making the same movement again and again and again. It's definitely damaged to some soft tissue. It'll get better by itself, but the number one treatment <laughs> is rest from your tablet. <laughs> And that's about three weeks of no gaming, fella. Ouch!